Did you know that the Our Urban Voices podcast is an outreach ministry of the Heart for Muslims Conference? Our vision is to promote love for Muslims and eliminate the fear of Islam. Join us this year on Saturday, November 5th at Trinity Baptist Church in Manhattan, New York. We will be focusing on the power of proximity, how your location, culture, and shared experiences can bring Christ to Muslims. Hear from Muslim ministry practitioners and connect with like-minded Christians. Find all the details at heartformuslims.com. You are listening to Our Urban Voices with Dr. Alphonse Javed, a podcast that presents Christian narratives through diverse voices that impact urban ministry. Here is your host. In this podcast, we cover everything from churches and church planting efforts, mission and missions organization evangelism, and unreached people groups, emerging movements and initiatives, justice, current events related to faith, and the persecuted church too author interviews, and more. Let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to our Urban Voices. I'm your host, Dr. Alphonse Javi. Today I'm joined by the Reverend Dr. Dwayne Alexander Miller, an Anglican author, pastor, and professor with the, a focus on Islam in Madrid, Spain. Our topic today focuses on several aspects of Muslim conversation conversion to Christianity plus a conversation about moderate Muslims. Duane is currently an associate pastor at the Anglican Cathedral of uh, the Redeemer and professor of Old Testament at a local seminary. He received his PhD in divinity with a focus on world Christianity from the University of uh, Edinburgh and has written numerous articles and books on Christian missions and witness to and among Muslims. He is also the founding co-pastor of Kanisa, an Arabic language Christian fellowship in Madrid, where he lives with his wife. Duane has graciously agreed to do two episodes with us, so tune in next week as well for a discussion about how churches can care for Muslim background believers. Thank you for joining us today, Duane. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Madrid is very hot during this time of the summer, but I got my fan on. I got an icy drink, so I think I'll be okay. All right. So before we start, please tell us uh, very briefly about your family. I believe family is so important because it helps us to humanize us as a person. So please share a little bit about your family. Um, I've been to I've been married to Sharon since 2003. Um, we've been uh, workers overseas. We were in the Middle East for about eight years, and we've been here in Spain for about five years. Actually, we've been here for five years as of today. Um, wow. And uh, we have three kids, uh, David, who's 18, heading off to university later, and then uh, Amelia, who's almost 15, and Sam, Samantha, who's almost uh, 12. So they're, wow. they're all here milling around somewhere. But wow. I told them not to come in, so don't worry. <laughs> so I have four children. Uh, but yours are older. Mine are uh, very mm-hmm. young, uh, five, four, and my girls are year and a half old. So yeah. Well, you you can see some of the artwork of some of my kids behind me. <laughs> that's, that's the that's yeah, the I, wall for the I, children's I, art. I really I was gonna ask you. I said I was thinking about asking. Are you in? Uh, are you teaching in a school or a pre K or something? Mm-hmm. But then I was like, no, yeah, I think it's different. yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> about the art. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like that. Um, Well, I'm so glad that you are here. Let's start off with how you got involved in ministry to Muslims. What inspired you to reach out to Muslims and uh, to start um, initiatives to support new believers from Muslim background? Well, that begins when I was doing my MA in theology. I was in my early 20s at that time studying in uh, San Antonio, Mm -hmm. Texas. And, uh, you know, one of the main things you do when you study theology or getting ready for ministry is you learn about these kind of first five centuries of the Christian church, which were so important. This is when we have the church fathers figuring out 
what books belong in the New Testament, right. defining these key doctrines, atonement, incarnation, trinity. And as I was learning about these, I was reading about these cities that I didn't know about, like Carthage and North Africa, Alexandria and Egypt, Antioch and southern Turkey, uh, Constantinople, um, and what is today uh, Turkey as well. And I thought, how, how interesting. I'd love to know more about these cities. And I found out that these cities today are almost entirely Islamic cities. So I had been kind of given, you know, as a young Christian, this kind of idea like, oh, the gospel is always moving forward. And I learned with Islam, that's just not the case. So I thought, well, what is there anyone who is taking the gospel to Muslims, sharing it with them in a kind but clear manner? And that was really the beginning of my call. So it comes from studying church history, which is probably a strange answer. No, this is a good answer because uh, it, it shows your journey. It's not just you one day, because I, I get to hear, just so you know, I do get to hear from other uh, practitioners or scholars who are working among Muslim communities. And uh, many of them were affected by 9-11. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's where their journey started. But I, I like that. I, I love hearing different uh, um uh, you know, reason why God uh, uh, put us in this track, right? So for you, that is like, oh, you saw something in the scriptures and uh, you, God, uh, uh, put that on your heart to investigate further and make those connections. I, I, I think this is beautiful. Uh, I, I love church history. I think church history uh -huh. is uh, really cool, but for some people it's boring. That's fine too. Uh -huh. uh, so, but I love it. Uh, and I'm glad that... Um, we have uh, people like you whom God has uh, called to to serve in that area. So over the years, what are some of the common reasons you have uh, uh, seen that bring Muslims to Christianity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. And that's one of the questions that's been researched a great deal. I have a whole talk about that on my uh, my YouTube page, if anyone wants the long version of the of the uh, the answer. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple of things. One of them is a sure salvation. Uh, you know, for Christians, we're so kind of, ba ba we're used to this idea, I think, of this great phrase from John the Baptist, uh, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And in Islam, and just Orthodox Islam, this is not me being polemical, this is just me describing Orthodox traditional Islam. You know, God or Allah can forgive people, he can be merciful, he can be gracious, but you never really know for sure if you have repented, if you have asked for forgiveness, you can never be sure if he's forgiven you. So you can understand how this idea that uh, you have a sure salvation is very um, hope giving to, to a lot of Muslims um, and people coming from a Muslim background. Another, just briefly, another brief reason would be dreams and visions. And a lot of people like to emphasize this a lot, but I want to say that people do have dreams, there are visions, there are answers to prayer that seem to be miraculous that I would say are miraculous. Uh, but that's always one step in a road. Uh, that's never the end. Sooner or later, just like with Paul, who has to go to Damascus, you have to have a flesh and blood Christian to, to teach them to pray, to baptize them, like with Paul. And then finally, I would say just on a larger level, a lot of Muslims today are very, um, they're kind of disappointed with Islam. You know, Islam makes this promise that if you follow the Sharia, you are going to have a society that is just, that is prosperous, that is powerful, that is respected. And you have 40 odd countries today in the world that have some version of the Sharia. And they all have something in common, which is that Muslims are really trying to emigrate from those countries by and large. So you have to ask this question, you know, Islam gives you a promise. It says you will have prosperity and power and respect. But a lot of Muslims are looking around at the, at the world today in a way that, you know, 100 years ago, you couldn't know what's going on everywhere in the world like we can today. And they're saying, well, th th there's something wrong. Islam is making a promise here, but I don't see it being fulfilled. So that's mm -hmm. not enough of a reason to become a Christian, but it's definitely enough of a reason to start looking for other paths right. to know God right. and other ways to lead life. Well, Duane, that that's excellent. Uh, all uh, three of those are very rational. That's not insulting any uh, uh, you know followers of Islam or, in, or imposing our belief. It's just rational questions and i think i have asked those questions living in pakistan i think many people do because when you you are born and raised in a muslim context it doesn't matter where you come from the promise is there because it's been preached it's been taught is that so i i was born in a christian family but still your schools are dominating with the same narrative they are dominated by the same narrative 
And yet everybody's struggling like, okay, where is this promise? Where is that hope? Um, so I love, um, uh, you know, the social aspect of that. And you can just look around and see, oh, um, so thank you so much. And I definitely we're going to make sure that your YouTube uh, information is also available on our website, uh, oururbanvoices.com. That's the podcast website. Uh, so if Christians make a point to learn more about Islam and uh, to have better relationship with Muslims, do you think Muslims uh, would generally be more receptive or open to understanding uh, to Christianity, for example, if Christians were more welcoming to Muslim immigrants, you just talk about immigrants, just right. Briefly, you mentioned that they are immigrating uh, uh, or migrating, and uh, uh, so 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 if Christians were more welcoming to Muslim immigrants and refugees, do you think that would have a big impact? Uh, yeah, there's no question that God is doing something really new um, in, in the world today. I mean, it was started back in the 1960s in Indonesia, where we have several really substantial movements, sometimes hundreds of thousands of people coming from Islam to the Christian faith, di different types of Christianity, different denominations. Um, but that happens in the 1960s. And, but, and before that, we have about since the beginning of Islam, so, you know, 1200, 1300 years, where where substantial numbers of, of, of conversions are, are almost unheard of. There's like two or three possibilities here and there, but, but it's a brand new thing that God is really doing in the world um, just again in the last uh, half century or so. Um, and one of the main things, I didn't mention this with your previous question, you said what attracts Muslims to the Christian faith? Oftentimes it's the witness of the church. It's easy for us, especially me and you as pastors and, and ministers, to get hung up on all the problems the church has because we worry about these things and you know we're very we're very aware of them but um i love that uh you know oftentimes it, it is the person who is teaching english as a second language to immigrants uh one of the things that my wife and kids do here in madrid is they help immigrant kids many of them from a muslim background not all of them many of them uh to do homework their parents don't have a good education or they don't speak spanish so they can't do it so for a lot of a lot of Muslims, it is just this, just living out the Christian faith, uh, just the kindness. And, you know, we don't think about this, but like, look at all the hospitals, the schools, the clinics, um, all these things that have been founded and that are named after Christ or, or one of his followers in, in honor of, of Jesus Christ. And this really does communicate with a lot of Muslims. Um, and, and they start to ask questions. You know, I remember one guy in, in Jordan, he said, you know, we came here from Iraq. We we came here with nothing. This was after the war. And uh, the, the Muslims, they said, you, you need to go. And uh, the pastor of our church there, he just took them some, some rice and some tea, some basic things, not particularly expensive. And the elder of the family said, uh, no, no one has done this. Why are you doing this? And he was able to say, this is the love of Christ. This is what Jesus has taught us. This is the life that Jesus has given us to live. And, and he was very profoundly impacted by that. I think you're right. Uh, you know, being a pastor is easy to teach, but it's so cool that you just shared an example. So teaching is the uh, teaching combined with these kind of uh, examples where the person is just simply telling them like, well, I'm doing this because the love of Christ. Awesome. So we have uh, been talking about a lot, um, a lot on the podcast about the how of Muslim ministry, such as the methodology, etc. But we also need to be talking about the why of Muslim ministry, right? So obviously in the, in the United States, many churches will not have uh, many or any Muslims around uh, uh, their church or their, uh, in their area, basically. But we do focus on urban ministry here. Um, so how do we inspire pastors and churches to care about Muslim ministry? Why should churches and pastors care? Mm -hmm. that, that's a great question. And, you know, before coming to Spain and after moving back from Israel, we were in, in Texas and mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of this sort of thing, but at local churches and uh, and just trying to encourage people to reach out to local Muslims. San Antonio, Texas, we have a, a quickly growing Muslim population, so it's not it's not hard to find Muslims there. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that I would say is just pray every day. God, give me a Muslim friend. It's not a very fancy prayer, I know, right. Um, right. but uh, that, that's a great prayer. And I think once we are kind of, it's on our radar, we're going to realize that a lot of us, we, we have someone in our neighborhood, someone at a local shop, 
someone at our university or our school, someone in our business, uh, our place of business where we work, um, that, that is a Muslim. And just, just pour your life into forming a friendship with them. This is not really about preaching. You know, if, if our lives are centered in Christ and we share our lives with people, uh, the struggles, the difficulties, the blessings, uh, we are, uh, that's, that, that is the work of, of evangelism. Now, sooner or later, of course, you want to clearly mm -hmm. communicate the gospel, but that really is the beginning, just having those personal uh, relationships. Yeah. Let me also just briefly say that I know that a lot of people are worried about Muslim immigration. Right. And that's a, that's a normal thing for humans to worry when their societies change. I don't mm -hmm. think that that's because they're racist or bad. That, that happens everywhere in the world. It's always happened. But I like a verse uh, where Paul says, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of right. love, power, and a sound mind. So mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's not react out of fear. Let's react out of love, power, mm -hmm. and a sound mind. Amen. I agree with, I agree with you, brother. I agree. So changing uh, gear a bit, you have uh, interviewed Mustafa Ayol, Akiol on uh, YouTube mm -hmm. before, right? So Mustafa is a, a Muslim who has written quite a few books calling for a reformation with Islam, oh, within Islam, sorry, and uh, um, a, a return to tolerance and freedom and showing how, how Islam can be compatible with the democracy and the civil and, uh, and religious liberty. Do you think it's important for Christians to support moderate Muslims like him, or should Christian only focus on Muslim missions? Mm -hmm. Well, my answer just briefly is, is both things. I think we can engage in interreligious di dialogue. I think we can try to support people who are, who are offering a more tolerant vision of what Islam is. And, and Mustafa Akiol, I mean, to, to his credit, he is digging up historical sources. He's not trying to present a radically new vision of Islam. He's saying that the way that across the centuries we have interpreted the Sharia, the Islamic law, it, we kind of went off the track. We need to reform Islam. This is the same thing the Protestant reformers said and, and a bunch of other people. So this is something that I think Christians, we should try to be sympathetic with. Um, so, so I think that we can support people who have a, a vision that is closer to our vision of what a just, good, a healthy society is. And, and Mustafa Akyol, to again, to his credit, he would say, if somebody wants to leave Islam, they should be free to leave Islam. Um, and I think that that kind of vision of a tolerant, peaceful Islam, I think that's something that's beneficial to the entire world. But on the other hand, we can still share the gospel with Muslims. So I don't think we have to choose uh, either or in that case. Yeah, I, I, I like that too. Uh, even though I, I think, I think uh, um, for folks who are um, more in injustice oriented uh, ministries, uh, they will prefer uh, supporting uh, the idea of uh, tolerant Islam in order to um, have those uh, uh, communicate, you know, communications. Uh, but I, I noticed that you use uh, interreligion rather than interfaith. Why, why did you do that? Or well, is it the same? Oh, I'm, I'm happy to go either way, interfaith, interreligious dialogue. I, I just, for me, they're, they're roughly the same. Uh, okay. The same thing. All right. So as we close out, is, it, is there anything else you'd like to add to this conversation for this episode? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to encourage everyone who's listening to us and who is considering these things to, to be encouraged. I mean, mm -hmm. we are living in an exciting time. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, usually most exciting times are also characterized by a lot of change mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of difficulties, a lot of challenges. I'm not ignoring those or saying that they're not important. They, they are. But on the other hand, you know, let's try to see what God is doing in the world, what he's already doing in terms of, of bringing Muslims to him in Christ. Mm -hmm. And let's try to be part of what, what God is already doing. That, that's the mission of God. He's at work in the world, and, and we can come alongside and try to be part of that mission. I think it's a great time to, to be alive. That's awesome. So if uh, listeners wants to get in touch with you or find your book, what are the easiest ways? So you can go to my blog, Duane Miller. Duane is D-U-A-N-E, miller.wordpress.com. You can go to my author page, on um on amazon it's got a lot of books and a lot of books that i contributed a chapter to not the entire book and um finally at youtube uh, you have to look up duane miller look up islam 
There's another pastor named Dwayne Miller who was miraculously cured of a, of a sickness, which I have not had that grace. So obviously he has a lot more hits. So Dwayne Miller Islam and my, my page will pop up on there. It's a lot of material in Spanish too. And I know that a lot of churches in the United States are, are working in a bilingual context. So go ahead and, and check that out too. And that can be found on urban, our urban voices dot um, website as well. That's our website. That's where we post things. So we're going to make sure that we uh, put all of this information there too. Great. Our listeners can find all of that. Um, but what I want to do is <laughs> I want to talk about uh, something very serious. And that is, tell me a joke. Okay. I've got a good joke. All right. I'm ready. Okay, so there, there, there was a there was a knight in the Middle Ages, and he went to do his pilgrimage to Jerusalem to visit the holy sites. And then he hired two Muslims, a camel driver and a guide, to take him to the port of Alexandria in Egypt. And then he was going to sail back to France. And they're going there, and he, they come up to a village in the morning, and he hears the call to prayer from the minaret. And he says, this is so beautiful. What is that? And the guide who can translate, he says, oh, that, that is the heart of Islam. That is the, that is the faith uh, that Muhammad taught us, that the prophet taught us. And he says, oh, it's so beautiful. I will become a Muslim right now. And so he says the Shahada and becomes a Muslim. Then that evening, they're going on and the guide says, okay, we'll stop at this village and, and we'll sleep here. And the camel driver says, no, 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 we have to keep going. And he says, it's, it's getting dark. And he says, why, why can't we stay here? He says, brother. I know the Muazin here in this town. He's so bad. If the knight hears the call to prayer from this mosque, he'll just go back to Christianity. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good, good. Uh, so thank you so much for being on the show. Again, that was uh, Dwayne Alexander Miller, professor and pastor. And thank you to all our listeners. We truly could not do this without you. If you learn something, have a topic suggestion or would like to leave a leave us feedback drop us a note at urban our urban voices.com be sure to subscribe to the show and leave an honest review wherever you listen to your podcast tune in next week as dr miller will be back on the show to discuss how and why churches should care for new muslim background believers who am i this question has pierced the heart of women since Eve left the garden. Today, women around the world allow untruths to fracture our identity. While lies threaten to destroy us, they also unite women in common suffering. Could this be a strategic key to unlocking truth for all women? Join us November 4th through the 6th at the Hepzibah House in Manhattan for an immersive multimedia art experience exploring the lies holding women captive and the truth which sets them free. For more details, visit ungallery.org. That's ungallery.org. You've been listening to Our Urban Voices with Dr. Alphonse Javed, which presents Christian narratives through diverse voices that impact urban ministry. Please check back for new episodes every week.